you can do it. If you believe in yourself, you can do whatever it is you want to do in life. Do it now. Do you understand? The new show, Esquire's Friday Night Tykes, it's getting a lot of attention and it's drawing some ire in some parents. When does effective coaching actually cross the line into abusive coaching? King Five's Dr. Wendy Sue Swanson joining us this morning to talk about athletics, coaches, and bullying. She is a pediatrician at the Everett Clinic, also known to us as Seattle Mama Doc. Thanks for coming in to talk about this. <laughs> You're welcome. Nice to be here. So there are a lot of parents who think that coaching, tough coaching, creates stronger athletes, that builds character. But what does the research actually tell us about this kind of coaching? Well, you know, in some ways that's subjective, but I think, you know, what's really brought this to head are, are two things. You know, that new show and the trailer that we showed a clip of from the Friday Night Tykes is, is really scary in some ways, that we think this kind of tough love, abusive humiliation can be an acceptable place for our children. Bullying is bullying, no matter where it happens, if it's emotional bullying, if it's cyber bullying, and if it's even coaches bullying. You know, sports are a really big part of so many of our kids' lives, and we want it to be an awesome part of their life, both because of the benefits in fitness, but also because of the great benefits in confidence and great agility and skill. Now, over 20 million children, you know, the estimate is actually not known perfectly, but, you know, over 20 million kids in the U.S. play organized sports. Over 60% of kids when they're six who are boys start, and over almost half of girls, even by the age of six, are in an organized sport. So there's great social and athletic benefit from that, getting to know teammates you know, getting to know your community in a different way. But a lot of kids can be bullied in the sports environment. In fact, the majority of kids, when you ask them when they're young teens, when going back, you know, were they bullied? Yeah, they were in the sports environment. And that can really increase the risks of things like anxiety or depression, sleep challenges, or even school trouble. So it's it's a, it's a real topic, and I think these shows are just, you know, demonstrating and glorifying some of this bullying behavior, which is pretty disgusting. And how common is it on the field? And how common is it in most sports, like football and soccer? Well, well even we, all the way up through high school. Sure, and you know, I, I think it's hard to know exactly, Joyce, because so much of bullying is probably underreported. Mm -hmm. You know, a recent study out of the of the United Kingdom really looked at asked about 6,000 young adults and said, look back at your time in sports, and three quarters of them said that when they were an athlete, they were bullied. And when you ask them specifically, who was it that was bullying them? Somewhere between a third to a half of them actually are reporting that the coach was the bully. Now, you know, what's interesting is that just this week in the timing with the Friday Night Tykes event, you know, a, a study came out where pediatricians were saying, you know, coaches really kind of use these different tactics to keep this bullying alive. They say things like, oh, I survived it when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. You can do it. Or they say backhanded apologies, like, oh, I'm so sorry I got kind of out of control there, but we really need the fundamentals. And so I think, and then they say things to kids, even things like, you know, if you can't cut it, maybe you're not made for this team. And that's where we keep bullying alive when it really doesn't need to be. And our job as parents is to really check in on not only what sports are our kids doing, what's the culture like, and who's the coach? And how can we ensure that we teach our kids to really stand up for what they're deserved, which is great respect, great, maybe even hard coaching, but no bullying. And where the line is that they don't have to tolerate or accept that kind of uh, abuse from anyone, a friend or a coach. That's right. That they can walk away from that. That's right. It's not uh, worth it. Absolutely, and I think you know we need to be at practice here and there. We need to check in with our kids, and we need to tell them to stand up for their peers and to report back to those in charge. I mean, the article in Pediatrics, which is from the American Academy of Pediatrics, you know, even went so far to say, you know, if you're concerned as a parent, you need to talk to authorities at the school. If a coach is bullying your child in some ways, humiliating them outside of just providing them training, and and in, if you're even more concerned, calling someone like Child Protective Services. This is serious stuff. And really does stay with children for their lifetime sometime. It does, doesn't it? it that, does. That's the scary part, too. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we're really excited about sports. Yeah. I mean, when you think about who we are as a, as a town right now with Seattle and the Seahawks, this is great. And we know the far majority of kids will really benefit from the sports. It's just, can we be thoughtful about not continuing this kind of behavior? And these shows, I think, really just even make it seem as this, this kind of bullying is acceptable when it's not. And the statistic that stays with me is that you said three quarters of kids who were surveyed said that they had been bullied by a coach. Three quarters said they'd been bullied. About one third to a half said they'd been bullied by a coach. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> a lot. Thank you, Dr. Wendy Sue Swanson. We're going to put this online so yep, you can lots of content get online. more information.